this little point here you, you were saying, Brandon? Yes, at the mouth of the Bay of Fundy, uh, which is right here, um, that little island um, is where I used to live, but not on that island. I used to live on an island that was just off of that island. So I would have to take the ferry from the land to that island, drive down, get on another ferry, and go to a little tiny little island, which might actually be there, called uh, Whitehead Island. Whitehead Island, there we mm. go. Off Grand Manan Island, which is that big one. Awesome. So, so my friend Brandon here has agreed to stick around for an extra day. Uh, he was here yesterday for the last log going up on the Palisade Walls. That yeah. was a, a happy moment for me. It's been yes. a rather daunting task. And, and as, as I mentioned in the previous episode, Brandon was here and lifted actually the first log onto the pile when yes. we were just clearing, clearing mm -hmm. the area around the fort. But so we're going to talk, and it's going to be a real wee bit of history because it's a, a vast topic, cartography. Yeah. Today, um, so uh, we're just going to touch on a few things. But the map that I have here is a reproduction of a map uh, made in 1711, and I'm going to show you my powder horn, which Robert Wiggins. I'll get a close up. Uh, Robert Wiggins did the scrim shine on. And this is a horn, uh, or a map on this horn, that was made in 1749. Uh, yeah, 49. And it basically shows the Great Lake Basin. It has all of the fortifications, uh, different native tribes. Uh, it, it, it leads into our discussion of the importance of maps. So... Um, I'll, I'll, I'll kick it off by, in my humble opinion, if, if it weren't for cartography, we'd all be living in the Stone Age still. Yeah, and not only is it about uh, map making, cartography, but it's also about navigation and actually knowing how to use the map uh, so that you don't crash your ship or end up off course by 50, 60 kilometers. Um, because a lot of, in, in the early 1700s, a lot of ships were lost due to not knowing where they were. Mm -hmm. Because at the time, they could quite easily calculate latitude, which is the distance oh, yeah. from the equator. Um, but they, they had a, a difficult time doing longitude. And by then, the, the math had been uh, done, uh, but it was hard to do in practice at sea. Mm -hmm. And that's really kind of where our conversation um, is going with this um, cartography and navigation because um, at the time in 1710, 1711, which is when this map is from, mm -hmm. um, they had the math, but they didn't have the technology. So they needed to create a type of clock that could tell time uh, at Greenwich Mean Time Accur anywhere on accurately. Earth accurately. Mm -hmm. So if you were if the way they learn to calculate longitude is that if you're over in the Caribbean, or no, maybe not Caribbean, let's say, yeah, Caribbean, um, you knew the time and Greenwich Mean Time, and you could tell the time in local time, and with that you could create a triangulation and do tons of very complex math without a calculator and eventually find out where your latitude or longitude was. Now, the difficulty was this clock, the chronometer, and it the clocks at the time, they would lose a lot of time. Mm -hmm. So one day you're looking at it and then the next day you look at it and it's Lost five seconds minutes. off. Yeah, yeah or, or six seconds, 10 seconds, a minute, whatever, mm -hmm. depending on the quality of your watch. Right. Now that got worse when you went to sea and there was the salt air and there was the different pressure and all that stuff. So um, in 1714, the British Parliament, they put out a kind of proclamation saying, we are putting out an award called the Longitudinal Act of 1714. Love it. And we're putting out an award for anybody who can make a practical, not, it, has, it doesn't have to be proven, or it does have to be proven, but not just proven, it has to work at sea. And the amount of money you get will increase based on the accuracy. So if you're within one minute um, of, and I'm not talking about time, I'm talking about degrees. Degrees of time, So if yeah. you're, first of all, if you're within a degree, you get, 10,000 pounds. Back then, that was a million and eight hundred thousand dollars American. Yeah. And then if you're within half a degree, you get this 15,000. And if you can be Sir, within a Sir. few minutes, yeah. it's 20,000, which was huge, huge dollars. So these 
uh, industrial mathematicians were putting their minds to it. Engineers were putting their mind to it. And um, eventually it was found by a guy named John Harrison. Mm -hmm. And that wasn't, it wasn't like one day he, he com comes with this clock and they give him 10,000 pounds and say, see you later. It, to it took decades to prove mm -hmm. this mechanism. And there were problems with it. So in the beginning, in 17, I think it was around 1720, he comes and uh, he's got it and it doesn't work as well as they want but they do give him some money to make a new one they said mm -hmm. okay this is a good start make good another one on yeah it. here's 500 pounds make mm -hmm. another one and then he went through four versions and it wasn't until 1760 when he was kind of older and his son was also around doing helping him out um, that his uh, chronometer was actually really kind of established and saying, okay, give this to every ship captain, make a million of them. They were very, very expensive. So only the kingdoms and the navies and the East India Company could afford these, what were today, supercomputers. Like mm -hmm. these, this was the pinnacle of technology, this chronometer. At the time. Before we get into the math, and we're going to talk a little bit about the intricacies, and without math, we wouldn't be where we are today, that's for sure. But I'm going to go back a lot further in time and look a little bit at the history of cartography because we have now, um, we know that some of the earliest maps were actually etched in stone. They were crude, but dating back to, um, I believe, 4th century BC, like old, old. Uh, but then from my perspective in studying native cultures, uh, they had maps as too, but they were mental maps. Mm -hmm. Just like their storytellers would pass on. They weren't lost. They weren't just these pockets of isolated natives about. They knew how to get about. They would use um, woodland natives, for example, in this part of the world, the Great Lakes Basin, would use tree markers. Mm -hmm. uh, the Inuit used nookchooks. Yeah. Um, and I find it fascinating that, <clears throat> and we think that, you know, back to being isolated, but we know their trade network was absolutely amazing. And without these mental maps, let's say, they would be unable to do that. Mm -hmm. So an example that comes to mind is catlinite. It's right. a mineral that's only found on the eastern boundary of Minnesota. And yet in archaeological digs, we find that as far north as Alaska. Mm -hmm. We find it to the Gulf of Mexico. We find yeah. it in the woodland uh, tribes of the Great Lake Basin. So, mm -hmm. Just like they found axe heads from Hudson Bay Company all the way in what's today like Calgary, Alberta. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's Amazing. So, anyway, back to a wee bit of math. So now we've got the instrument tells the time. Mm -hmm. um, it was all about triangles. You were wanting to find the position of an, a celestial body like the moon and then the sun or maybe Venus or Mars or any constellation. Um, and then by doing pages and pages and pages of calcu uh, calculations, mainly trigonometry. Mm -hmm. And then, and, and I know you don't want to get too deep into the weeds with the math. Um, you would do that again for British time. Now, what, um, because it was so labor intensive and one wrong stroke of a pen could send you a hundred kilometers off course. Mm -hmm. What they ended up doing was coming up with these, um, these almanacs, these charts, so that instead of doing all the calculations, they could take the readings, do a little bit of math, and then refer to this um, navigator's almanac with charts right. and charts and charts and charts of simplified, uh, simplified numbers that they mm -hmm. could almost look for and say, okay, here we are. Um, and those people, those books were made in England by people doing calculations, like just thousands of hours of calculations. Mm -hmm. And those people were actually called computers. Isn't that cool? Yeah, isn't that cool? So that I think is, that, that might really be the cool. term of where ca computer came from. That is really cool. These individuals doing the calculations for the almanac. You got to wonder though, and you think about uh, cultures that had no concept of these. Obviously they had some method of navigating. Vikings comes to mind. Mm -hmm. Like how were they able to um, find Iceland, go from Iceland to Greenland, go to Greenland and s s probably establish one of the first um, communities in mm -hmm. North America. It was established in Newf what we call Newfoundland mm -hmm. or, yeah. or Newfoundland. Yeah. Um, they didn't have those instruments. 
they, they, they didn't have the instruments, but they did have the idea. They were looking at the celestial bodies. Like they said, the sun rises in the east, sets in the west, and they were Simple. traveling west. Yeah. So they said, That's okay, let's way. use the celestial body, point mm -hmm. west in the morning. And like, how do you stay west? I don't know. <laughs> but I think in the morning, they could just point at the sun and go. But it obviously was pretty sketchy. Pretty I mean, sketchy. I, I, it's, it's easy to navigate with the sun. I use it when I'm walking in the woods, you know, mm -hmm. uh, sun on the one shoulder going this direction. I want it on the other shoulder if I'm going back fairly quickly. Yeah. Uh, but on a cloudy day and you have no reference and yeah. you have, they certainly didn't have sextants. I mean, that evolves into the instrument uh, inventions. The magnetic compass mm -hmm. is the first, the telescope, the um, sextant. Mm -hmm. I mean, without these instruments, all that math would have been mm -hmm. for naught, right? And it really spurred innovation because they had a lot of these things, but making them work at sea, the, the kings and the lords and stuff, they had to put money into saying, okay, I'm putting out a prize. You not only, you have to take this mm -hmm. big, huge thing and make it this big, and it has to work in crazy conditions where you're going up and down. And accurately. And accurate. Back to accuracy. Yeah, yeah. the cost of inaccuracy accuracy. was human lives and gold, cargo, you name it. Mm -hmm. I think uh, I, I have a passion for studying historic characters, and one of my favorites is, uh, is Champlain. Uh, so he, he's um, crossed the Atlantic Ocean 21 times. Hmm. Uh, he mapped as far south as uh, Cape Cod, decided that wasn't a good spot. He left that for much later period when we have Jamestown and, and, and uh, Plymouth Rock and mm -hmm. what have you. Uh, decides on Port Royal on the Bay of Fundy, where mm -hmm. she lived. That didn't right go so well, yeah. right? And then uh, eventually establishes uh, Quebec City. Mm -hmm. I find it <clears throat> fascinating that um, a as navigation evolved, we get into the accuracy of actual cartography. And, and you notice that this is commissioned by the King, King of England, or King of Great Britain at the time. So the colonies are extremely accurate. They weren't exactly on friendly terms with the French, so this is French Canada. And you notice that the, the accuracy isn't quite there Probably they aren't getting the uh, the maps from 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 France, and uh, yeah, I find that pretty interesting. But uh, so I thank you for for both the help, uh, sharing your knowledge. It's always fun to have you visit the station. But pleasure. Now that we have the fortification done. Uh, we need to train the troops for defense. Mm -hmm. So I think we're going to go out and see uh, how you do with your marks. All right. Would you like that? Absolutely. Let's uh, let's fire up one of those smoke poles. Let's do it. Mm -hmm.